Hey, I'm Mike and welcome to Need to Make It. Sharp inside corners, unless they're part of the original design intent, give our parts a far less refined look. They're also going to slow the print down due to the abrupt changes in direction. And depending on the print orientation, they can also make our parts quite a bit weaker. So I'd like to show you several of the best and simplest ways to eliminate that sharp corner for a much more professional looking, stronger and better fitting 3D print. So stick around. When looking for models to print, I can usually tell fairly easily which models are made by somebody that is experienced. And it really comes down to a lot of the little details and design choices. A radius corner for how simple it is really makes a big impact on the final product. Take this dust separator that I'm designing for example. This one will eventually be a two stage separator. This one is a very basic version. It's much less time consuming and just overall very simple. And then we have this one, which has many of the nice details that I look for, and it makes it much more like something that we would buy and much less like something that is 3D printed. There are no abrupt changes in direction. We don't have any obvious weak areas either. And overall, it is far more refined and professional. So let's have a look at some different options, specifically for the inside corners. I'm gonna be using Fusion 360 here, but most modeling softwares should have about the same capabilities. Here's a very basic L shape with sharp inside corners, and this is just gonna be our control sample, and we're gonna be leaving this one as it is. Now, what I do like to do on my 3D prints is remove any of these outside sharp corners with either a chamfer or a small radius there as well. This print printed vertically like this, where we have the transition from the larger base to the smaller column here, is going to be weak right at this transition point. And if we zoom right in on that transition, we have all of our layer lines built up. And right in here, we have a very weak area. And if force is applied on this top piece, stresses are going to be focused right in this area and it will be able to peel that top piece right off of the base. So this is what we would like to avoid and there are quite a few ways to do that. Probably the simplest way to treat any corner is just by using the fillet. The fillet's also nice because we can add several fillets of different sizes to reduce the buildup of excess features in our timeline that keeps everything super clean. So it is best to add these as close to the end of the design as possible. And now we have a much more gradual transition from this shape to this shape. The fillet also has the ability to be set to variable. And in the case of a variable fillet, we're gonna have maybe a small beginning and a small ending, and in the middle, we're gonna have something far larger. And it just transitions to that. This provides a very strong connection. And sometimes if we wanna maximize the size of the fillet, but there are restrictions in some areas as to the size, we would wanna transition. And of course, it has the same benefits as the regular fillet as well. It's easy enough to make a variable fill along a single path, but when we wanna combine paths, we can also make it work really nicely by turning off tangent chain. We'll create a variable size like one millimeter by three millimeters. Then we can select the next segment. This one can be three millimeters by three millimeters. And then the last, which can be then transitioned from three millimeters to one again. And we should end up with something like this, which both looks great and it can be quite strong as well. It completely changes the look of the design. Features like this really do a good job of gradually transitioning from one shape into another rather than having a very abrupt look. Overall, it's gonna be more organic. It's gonna make it look nicer as well. Another nice option is a combo between a chamfer and a fillet. And the cool thing about a chamfer is that you can change the lengths of the sides so it can raise up more than it comes out or vice versa. We can also fill it right here and right here giving a nice gradual transition. This detail does pretty much the same thing as a fillet does. You might be able to argue that this is a little bit stronger than a fillet, but we're gonna be doing some testing on these parts, so hopefully we can find out. Now, imagine that we want a strong part, but we also need it to mate very tight with another part, which has a sharp corner. How can we provide the clearance for that sharp corner? Maybe it's a hook that hangs over the edge of a table. Maybe it meets up against a piece of steel or a piece of wood. The simplest way to accomplish this is to use the pipe command and the pipe will add a rounded corner on the inside very easily and we can change the size to whatever we like and we can also change the shape as well. But I think in this case, the circular shape is the best one for this part. 
This does the job, so we can have one part meeting up against something that has a sharp corner and they won't interfere. And we still end up with that rounded corner to reduce that focus stress in one area. We still have those sharp corners on the outside and those can be easily removed by using the fillet command. And now we have this very smooth transition on the inside and the outside. The problem with this solution is that we have removed quite a bit of material in the corner, which really is not ideal for a strong part. So we can take this one step further and we can do that by starting with a sketch, but rather than having the center of the circle on the corner, we're gonna set the outside of the circle on that corner. This is going to dramatically reduce the amount of material that we're gonna remove, but it will still give the clearances needed. We can then sweep it to the different corners and we can also fill the outside corners just like the last one and we'll end up with something like this. And having a look at the section view, we can see that with this version, we're removing just a little bit of material, but we end up with quite a nice continuous curve. And if we go over to the pipe version, you can see we're removing dramatically more material. Also with the swept version, we have some control over the position of that circle in relation to the two faces. And that means we can position it more into the upper section or more into the lower section, depending on where the weakest area would be. So let's go ahead and we're gonna print these samples out to test them out. We're gonna be using six walls, 12 tops, 12 bottoms, 20% crosshatch infill, 0.2 millimeter layer height, 0.4 millimeter nozzle with PETG carbon fiber. And here we have all of our test pieces. Right here I have the basic version. Here I have the fillet. These are all the variable fillet. Then I have the chamfer fillet combination. Then all these are the pipe. Then all these are the swept version. Each of these has a slightly different position of that circle related to the faces. And then here I have a kind of prototype of a gusset combination with a variable fillet. And here is the test rig. I have this made of glass fiber reinforced ABS. It's extremely stiff and heavy duty. It's pinned into this frame with these two steel pins. And then we can test how much force it takes to break each of these. I'm gonna go ahead and get started by testing all three of the basic versions. I have switched to Newtons because I want a bit more precision. These are pretty small parts. And I've also removed the weight of the lever arm and set it to zero. And now we're good to start. Basic number one. And basic number two. And basic number three. The next up, we have these variable sized fillets and they should be quite a bit stronger. Variable fillet number one. Variable fillet number two. Variable fillet number three. Next up, we have these combination of chamfer and fillets. These should be quite a bit stronger as well. Chamfer fillet number one. Chamfer fillet number two. Chamfer fillet number three.
Next up, we have the pipe, and I don't expect these to do particularly well because of how much material we've removed, but let's find out. We have pipe number one. Pipe number two. Pipe number three. Next up, I have the swept versions and I've labeled them A, B, and C just to be able to tell them apart in our test. A is evenly spread between both sides. B is supposed to be just a little bit into the post and very much into the base. C is supposed to be all the way into the base. Swept number one. Swept number two. Swept number three. And the last test, which is just really out of curiosity, is the filleted gusset. Or is that gusseted fillet? One or the other, I'm really hopeful that this one will perform extremely well. Let's find out. The filleted gusset coming right up. I wanted to retest only letter A for the swept version, so that is equal into the post and into the base as well. So I've tested these three samples and these are the results. And I also tested one more filleted gusset just so I had a bit more data to compare against. And here are the results. Behind here I have all the data collected. And off to the right hand side I have the averages in newtons, kilograms and pounds as well. I'm just showing newtons here for the chart. So 81 newtons for the basic variable fillet came in quite a bit higher, almost double at 155. The chamfer fillet 125, a little bit lower than what I was expecting. The pipe, quite a bit lower than any of the other ones. And this is kind of what I was expecting. A, B, and C for the swept came in on average at 91. And just testing A, three samples, came in at an average of 90. So both a fair amount above the basic version. So adding that little bit of a curve in there, even though we removed a little bit of material, did improve its overall performance. And way, way above the rest, we have the filleted gusset or gusseted fillet coming in at 270 newtons. Now you can call this cheating if you want. I just was curious to see how well something like this would perform and it did perform exceptionally well. I'm quite happy about that. In the case of the pipe version, maybe using a smaller radius in here would be able to improve the performance. And the same may be true for the swept version. This is a PA test tower and it's probably not that obvious, but none of the corners on the inside are perfectly square. There's a small radius in there. And the same goes for outside corners on our 3D prints as well. So if we need to, we can either radius this corner to compensate for it, or we can remove material from the corresponding inside corner so that the parts can fit together a little bit better. That said, if I were gonna use this swept version as a real part, 
I would want to offset towards the corner just ever so slightly, 0.2 or 0.3 millimeters. That would give an appropriate amount of clearance for the corresponding piece to fit. So which of these is your preferred method for inside corners? Do you use any of these right now? And do you have any corner treatments that I have not tested here already that you would like to see tested? We have a good variety of options, some probably more useful than others and some better performers than others. The variable fillet has become one of my personal favorites to use. It wasn't that obvious at first how to use it, but now it makes adding fillets on unique shapes much easier, like this faucet or gillet where we have a few restrictive areas. It also seems like it is one of the best performers, but the other types also have their uses too and hopefully one of those will work well for you. This channel is now above 70,000 subscribers and it is growing well and hopefully we can reach or even beat the goal of 100,000 by 2025. We are only just getting warmed up with this channel. The videos are always new, always original, and I use as close to zero AI as possible. Everything is done right here by me in this shop. So make sure to subscribe so you can catch the next ones if you enjoy this type of content and want to help support this channel. Speaking of supporting the channel, I want to say a special thanks to my patrons for all of the support. I put as much as I can towards growing this channel to provide even better content. I'm saving for new lighting, a better camera, better testing equipment, and also better sound absorption as well. I hope you enjoyed the video and found that helpful or entertaining or maybe both, and I hope to see you on the next one.